And we can start that. All right, first off, you're looking Pinch at, out. You guys can see this, correct? You see me too, I think? Yeah. Yeah, right. absolutely. These notes, um, I've been asked a couple of times how to convert these to being able to write on them digitally. See, what I, what I want you to do is you can duplicate it, and once it's in, like, the folder, you can mark it up, and you can, uh, like, let's say you just wanted to add text up here, and, you, and it was an article, and you wanted to add, you can do that. I uh, am looking into seeing if we have, because um, there is an opportunity um, to uh, modify it, and you can... Let me go back to over here. You can, you can pay to convert the file, but I'm not going to pay for that yet unless I really need to. Okay. So um, I would either print them out or if you want to, you can um, modify the document if you want to in any way, shape, or form just uh, as it is there. So we're not going to save that. Um, so that's, we're going to talk about note taking real quick and why we use this what they call Cornell notes. I know it's in there uh, a little bit. I want to show you real quick, a quick little, all right, let's see if we can find it. And this, hopefully we can get this working. And we will search for, I use this uh, Socraticus. If you utilize YouTube to help you in any way, shape, or form, this is going to be, um, I think, pretty essential, pretty good. So we'll see. This is how you order all the this is an advertisement for cheap. So first, Domino's. All right, so. This is the type of note taking that we take. We're here to help you be a great student. Today we're going to demonstrate a technique for note taking called the Cornell method. And you all this can hear and see this. Uh huh. Awesome. Plus, it organizes mm -hmm. your notes to make reviewing easier. You can also use this technique. I can't see it. In your textbook or watch a video. You can't see it. No, I can't see it. I can hear it, but I don't see it. Huh. Okay, so that might be what your view would be. So, if you want to uh, change, probably you. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah. what, what did I miss? I had a few interruptions. You said what? Um, I had a few interruptions. Um, mind if you tell me what I missed? Yeah, we're just looking at, I wanted to show you this quick little clip about um, Cornell Notes and why we take them and you can create your own. That's basically what we used when I gave you that, um, where is it, this particular file, the new ZLA. Cool. All right. So she's going to break it down. Divide your paper into sections. Draw two lines, creating three areas. The bigger column on the right is where you take your notes in class. The smaller column on the left is where you'll write cues. And that notes is the who, what, when, where, why. That's kind of the big, big, big important information. Help you navigate through your notes. And the section at the bottom is for your summary. You'll fill in these last two sections after class when you review. Our cues, we're not yet necessarily using the cues. We're looking at creating a bank of vocabulary. That's what I want to focus on rather than cues. But she'll, you can use cues if you wanted to as well. Yes. In class, your teacher is presenting information in complete sentences, which is a good thing. That helps us understand the ideas. But that doesn't mean you should write down those complete sentences word for word when you take notes. Now that you've heard the complete sentence and understand it, you can write down a simplified version of the information. We're now going to play the beginning of one of our lessons on the history of the atom. Watch how we take simplified notes, not writing down every word, but just the key. Just the key. We might say the atomic age started with the work of John Dalton. Super Dalton fun stuff here, guys. <laughs> This picture of the world where everything is composed of atoms helped explain what had been observed in chemical reactions. For instance, different elements always combined to form chemical compounds in amounts that were simple whole number ratios. 
Dalton proposed that each element had its own unique type of atom with a certain characteristic weight. These atoms were very small solid particles that were indivisible. That was the model of the atom for almost a hundred years. Since Dalton's first conception, the atom has evolved over time. Each time new experimental observations were gathered that couldn't be explained by the atomic model of today, the model had to be revised and refined. For instance, the discovery of subatomic particles meant Dalton's model that said atoms were indivisible needed some work. In 1897, J.J. Thompson was the first to discover a subatomic particle, the electron, through his experiments with cathode rays. At this time, oh, no, people weren't sure. Oh, no, he is not Just to confirm, you guys can see time. this or no? Mm -hmm. You can see it? Awesome. Yes, I can see it. And was using magnets and electrically charged. Wait a minute, I see what? Reflect cathode rays. You can't, yeah. you, you can't see this? <laughs> I mean, I can see the page with use the LA notes, but um, is there supposed to be a video or something? Yes. All right. I will. Let's see if I can modify this. Again, this is brand new technology to me. Okay, so I got to go specifically to the particular. All right, let's see it. You can see it now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we see it. Now I see it. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit because you need to sort of get a visual Not on this. writing down every word, but just the points. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. Sorry. We might say the atomic age started with the work of John Dalton. Dalton proposed the atomic theory. I'm in super glad they used something really easy this to talk about. Of the world where everything <laughs> of atoms helped explain what had been observed in chemical reactions. For instance, different elements always combined to form chemical compounds in amounts that were simple whole number ratios. Dalton proposed that each element had its own unique type of atom with a certain characteristic weight. These atoms were very small, solid particles that were indivisible. That was the model of the atom for almost a hundred years. Since Dalton's first conception, the model of the atom has evolved over time. Each time new experimental observations were gathered that couldn't be explained by the atomic model of the day, the model had to be revised and refined. For instance, the discovery of subatomic particles meant Dalton's model that said atoms were indivisible needed some work. In 1897, J.J. Thompson was the first to discover a subatomic particle, the electron, through his experiments with cathode rays. At this time, people weren't sure if cathode rays were waves or particles. Thompson was using magnets and electrically charged plates to deflect cathode rays and thereby estimate their mass. He showed that cathode rays must be made up of negatively charged particles that were over a thousand times lighter than the smallest atom. That's hydrogen. Before this experimental result, it was thought that the smallest particle was the hydrogen atom. To account for his observations, Thompson proposed the plum pudding model of the atom. If you've never had plum pudding, that name may not make a lot of sense to you. So imagine you have a dense, chewy cake with little raisins all through it. Maybe like a raisin bagel. I'm going, I'm going chocolate instead. If you prefer. The cake oh, oh, is the bulk too. of the atom, and it's positively charged, while the little sweet bits of raisin or chocolate would be the mm. negatively charged electrons. Oh. Let's compare our notes to a transcript of the lesson. So I want to, this, this is why we do this, to break down important information. I want you to look from kind of the right side to the left and see which, which has more you information to it. Much you can see it's, it's ridiculously shorter, correct? Oh, mm -hmm. That's what wow. we're trying to do is pull out that essential information and that uh -huh. I think is going to be um, kind of kind of the best bet for us. So, what I want to do now is we are going to switch over to look at newsyla.com. Actually, I can. Just... 
Notice how we used abbreviations wherever possible and that we left space between the major ideas. We'll look at the end here where she writes a little bit of uh, conclusion. Lecture. Here I would write something like, model of the atom has changed over time with new discoveries. Dalton, indivisible. Thompson, plum pudding model. And we know. So that right there is, again, she did not write those sentences as like a grammatically correct sentence, but it's okay. No one's really gonna cry about it, but you have all that essential information in that small, small summary area. I want you to see the sizes there. So your notes should be a little bit bigger than your actual summary. So um, on the on that note paper where yeah. you want us to write, is that on the email? You just write it on there or do we print it out? Yeah, you can print it out or you can modify it if you want to, okay? Okay. All right, so let's look at Newsy LA and I did assign one earlier today and I wanna go over it and show you what, um, and again, I'll be assigning many, many more, but um, if you don't want to do the assignments on here, like if you want to do a different topic, I'm totally okay with it. Um, but I would like you to try and utilize or take um, and utilize that uh, worksheet. Okay, what happened here? I want to look at my assignment. There we go. Everything's a little slower when you zoom. And you guys can see this, correct? Yes, it's loading. Mm -hmm. All right, sweet. So um, it's appropriate. We live in Florida, right? Our first mm -hmm. article is about Florida. And you will receive this when you log into New ELA. And I'll give a little instruction. So I said a little Florida history for you this morning. And remember to do the following. Highlight, underline, important, essential information. And that's finding the who, what, where, where, why. And then literally just a three to five sentence summary and conclusion or slash conclusion. And we're looking for you to get a 75 to 100, okay? Now, the reason why I chose this one is because I have, um, I've looked at this one before and I wanted to show you my highlighting, my note taking and what that looks like. So it, I looks, like a it looks like a lake. So that yes, that is a lake. Okay. So we can highlight on the on the yeah. news there. Uh, on the news ELA. So I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna show you that I didn't need to. I want you to read every word, but here's the important stuff. And this is me. I've got three degrees and one's in Spanish, and I have to do this to extract the information out of a text. So we're talking about when. Um, when the first Floridians arrived 12,000 years ago and some of those tribes and the names there, Apache, Calusa Creek, um, talked about the conquistadors, which are those who have quote unquote discovered, it's Europeans really who have discovered the state of Florida, um, but you can't discover uh, an area where people already live, but that's what we call it. Anyways, they were looking for gold and silver, huge coastline, um, British, Spain, Cuba, talking about that. Um, looking at it being the 27th state, we have the uh, Seminoles in Florida. Here is a large map of Florida that includes the state quarter, what's on the back of it, which has the beaches, has um, what you'd see as those ships that the conquistadors used, and um, the spaceships that go out of Cape Canaveral, our state animals, the panther, um, orange blossom is the state flower. And then we want to know why we're called Florida. That little paragraph there discusses that in Spanish or in Spain, uh, Easter celebration is called Pascua Florida, which is uh, uh, La, uh, yeah, La Florida, which is Feast of, of Flowers. Pascua right? La Florida. Uh, then we have um, geography and landforms, talks about where we're located. We're a peninsula, which is a uni unique word you might want to put that off to the side, that is not an island. Right. But it is what? Isn't it a state or a place you go visit? We're, we're talking about the type of land form it is. So a peninsula oh. is a, it's not an island. It is a, um, 
piece of land. Like surrounded by water? Not surrounded, because that would be an island. So, um, oh, yeah, that's right. It is. Surrounded by water on how many sides? Three sides instead of two. Three, of course. Yeah. So that, I would know that that's what peninsula means. It's not an island, but it is uh, surrounded um, on three sides. And we'll talk about what right. this Yeah? Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to be one on one with me and you, or if you can answer it now. But when I do my newsly, I write my um thing like you. Do I write enough? Do Do you write enough? You mean at the yeah. end? Where is that? Or are you talking when you about say this write? Time? Yeah, when you say write, and then it says quiz because I do my quiz. Uh, that's like a summary. Yeah, and you can do that either digitally or you can do it physically on that paper. It's up to you. Okay. Yeah, I usually do it on Newsia. I write the little three to five paragraph Good. and then I do the quiz. Awesome. We just talked a little bit about Alabama, Georgia, and that we're in the Gulf of Mexico. And then on our east side, we're on the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about um, the Keys, basically. There are 1,700 tiny islands. That's called an archipelago. And then you could, <laughs> that's a definition of itself. So you could maybe use that as a um, vocabulary word. And then we have that causeway that goes to the Key West, and that's 42 special bridges that get us to Key West, okay? Talked about some of our Florida wildlife, as you've seen, armadillos, black bears, uh, panthers, alligators, crocodiles, all of them as well, okay? A um, couple of did you knows here about uh, Cape Canaveral and NASA. Um, oh, we have 663 miles of beaches, okay? I'm um, talking about Disney World that employs 60,000 employees, all right? Uh, we have about 20 million visitors to Orlando a year, which is, is our population, a little more than our population. And then just there's a map at the end. So you would do that, and again, you can choose your Lexile. The lower you go, the easier it is. And I'll show you that. So let's go back up to the top. We have um, the max today is only sixth grade, which is fine. And that has 724 words. If you go down to the 340 Lexile, you're now at 440 and that's second grade. So really breaks down the information even more. So you can start low and then uh, move high there. And that's um, pretty easy as well. So today though, we're gonna try, or we're going to sort of transition here to main idea. And main idea is super fun. I know you guys love it, but it's the main thrust of a paragraph or the main thrust of a book or whatever you're reading. And in our case, we look at articles. So today, we want to know what makes up a main idea and what supports the main idea. So right here, a paragraph, and I'm going to forward all of these worksheets to you. So you'll have them in an email form. So a, pa um, a paragraph is a series of sentences that support a main idea or point. A paragraph typically starts with a main idea or point called a topic sentence, and the rest of the paragraph provides specific details to support and develop the point. And I like this illustration. You have these supporting legs that hold up the main point, okay? Uh, and you wanna make sure that those legs have to do, this helps you with reading and with writing. So if your main idea is why your favorite team is the Red Sox, and you might have, again, that one of them might be that they have won a lot of uh, World Series, another um, supporting detail you might bring up David Ortiz like we did. But if you started talking in the next supporting detail about why you love bacon, do you see how like that leg wouldn't fit and you got your, your tables falling over, if that makes sense. So you want all of your supporting details when you write and when you read to really truly support that main point. So uh, what I would like to do is we could take a little bit of time now and practice on this um, on this IXL, so you'll you'll have kind of a a pointer reference and uh, reference. I'm going to start at. Uh, I'm not going to do math. I'm going to do language arts. 
that you have another teacher for math, so they can deal with that. All right, real quick here. Gonna look at third grade. Gonna simply do, uh, there's two sections here about main idea. Main idea is the first for all grades. Obviously, the lower the grade, the easier it is. And then the more difficult, you'll actually have paragraphs to read and you can determine the main idea from that. Um, so we'll look at two sections here using key details to determine the, ma uh, determine the main idea uh, and see if we can get a couple right and then move on to the next one, okay? So you guys can help me out with that. I don't know if there's a lag. You guys can see this, right? Yeah. All right, so mm -hmm. looking at, in a paragraph, three different details and which one would help us or tie together the main idea okay so babies can grow six uh inches longer in their first six months babies can weigh twice as much as their birth weight after the first five months babies can outgrow clothing sizes more quickly than adults okay um is our main idea so we're given two options here one's going to be too specific and one's going to be main idea okay so babies become uh, larger very quickly, or baby food is often sold in smart, uh, small jars. What do you guys think? It's gotta be the first one. Yeah, Maybe I go with the first one. It's gotta be the first one because in this section over here, did you see anything about small jars? Uh, it doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, so we'll submit that. And again, you're gonna see your smart score go up. Do you know what you're supposed to get on your smart score? Between 80 and 90. 80. 80 yeah. or 90. 80 or 90 is fine. Don't go super OCD like I am and try to get the hundos. Try and get, you know, 80 and 90 and that's sufficient. Let's look at the next one. Spider webs do not break in heavy winds. A spider web is powerful enough to catch and hold many insects or spider webs can last through hard rain. And we're supposed to again determine the main idea, okay, that ties all of these together. Spider webs are very strong or some spider webs can catch small birds without breaking. What do you guys think the main focus was? It has to be the first one. I'm yes. go with the first one. We're gonna go with the first one because there was nothing about any birds up here. There was something about insects. So, all right, so we're gonna go with the first one. We're gonna keep it up. Sometimes, uh, all right, one more. Sailors use maps to find their way at sea. Using maps, park rangers can, all, uh, can find lost hikers. Pilots can use uh, maps to plan their flights. So again, we're looking at which is the main idea. Maps can be helpful tools for people in different jobs or the stars can tell some people which way to go. I, uh... Which one do you think, Brian? I go with the second one. That's what I'm thinking about. All right, so let's look back. Do we see anything about stars in here? Sailors use maps to find the way to sea. Using maps, park rangers can find uh, lost hikers. Do we see anything about stars? No. So I got to eliminate that one, kind of like the process of elimination. I'm going to go with maps can be helpful for different jobs. And I'll go back that we talked about sailors, hikers, and pilots or okay. rangers here okay so we got a more smart scores 32 and we only did three of them i'm gonna go back and see if we could do the next section really quick we'll do a couple of those as well uh and then any questions you guys have or anything like that and we can um make that happen all right so let's do a few of these kangaroos love them right Baby kangaroos. Yeah, from, from <laughs> Australia. Definitely. A, fe a female kangaroo has a special fold of skin that folds, um, sorry, that forms a pouch. The pouch is like a large pocket on its stomach. When a baby kangaroo or a joey is born, it climbs into its mother's pouch. At birth, a joey is not only about one inch long, <clears throat> is only about one inch long. It needs to stay in the pouch so it can grow more. After several months, the joey has grown enough to leave the pouch for short periods of time. By the time the joey is 10 months old, it is ready to leave the pouch for good. So 
looking at the main idea, what supports all that? What is the main thrust or focus of that um, uh, paragraph? A baby kangaroo stays in its mother's pouch until it can grow strong enough to live on its own. Or female kangaroos have pouches on their bellies for carrying their young. Which one do you guys think? Anyone? Um, I'm going to say that it's probably not number two because they only talked about the power. Yeah, go with number one. Let's see number one. Let's see. If we get it wrong, we get it wrong. Who cares? No, nope, we're wonderful. All right, so this next... This next one, uh, let me decline that. Okay. Gravity is the force that makes things fall uh, to earth. You can't see or touch it, but without gravity, life on earth would be quite different. Everything would simply float away. If you jumped up, you would fly off into space. If you threw a baseball, it would never come down. Gravity is also the force that keeps the earth orbiting around the sun. So without gravity, the earth might float away too. So, again, we're looking for the main idea or thrust of the passage. Life on Earth would be different without gravity, or without gravity, Earth would orbit, wouldn't orbit the sun. What do you guys think? The first one. First one. Very good. And then I'm going to move down and show you a couple things. If you're having any issues, you can go down here and uh, go back to determining the, and organizing your thoughts here. Uh, I want to get one wrong on purpose just to show you guys. I'm just going to guess here. So when you get something wrong, go and look at the explanation. Look at the correct answer. Take a second and look and see that they're going to redefine main idea for you and that it is what a text is mostly about. Usually it is the key point your author wants the reader to uh, remember. The details in a text support proof and show the main idea, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to go to, um, I wanna just do the regular view. Where's my regular view? stopping the sharing okay so questions comments for me anything else you want to go over or so um what's our writing assignment for today um besides news ela the writing assignment yes for ixl for ix uh there you can look at the writing section if you look at that video i sent today um but uh you can you you do not we, we don't have a quote unquote writing um, section, but for you, I know we looked at your scores and everything. I'll probably give you um, help or give everybody really uh, what the RLA reasoning through language arts, what that looks like. Okay. There is a writing component and I'll give you kind of sample versions of that. And there's eight, um, little mini videos that teach you step by step by step how to analyze and go through that. Okay. Oh, cool. um, do we, um, I meant, um, do we have a reading assignment for, uh, for IXL? A reading assignment? No, no. Oh, okay. So I want you, um, when you're done with this today is I'll send you some more, um, things on main idea. Oh, okay. But let it. me, let me go back to, I'll, I'll go back to screen share real quick and go to IXL. Just for a second. What I want you to do is eventually get to main idea at the higher level. So I'm gonna go up to nine. So nine through 12, if you can do and get 90 to 100% on that, like the determining the main idea is a little bit different on that. It's a little bit longer, a little bit more difficult, okay? So the goal is start low, start, uh, at that lower level, okay, and and then move to getting to the um, to that high school level, okay. So this is more like um, practice than an assignment, right? Yeah, definitely practice, okay. I see. Cool. All right.
So anything else, my friends? Good to go? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for attending. We will we'll be here tomorrow morning as well, okay, at 11 with, uh, with some new information, okay? Thanks. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. You too. You too.